I am just the guest host today for Zara's Travels. This is Zara's Travel Show, and this is reaching out to all the followers of Okta, the chatbot that helps kids travel around the world, and certainly for grade three at United World College Southeast Asia in Singapore. You're joined by the great traveler, wonder, Paul Salopek, who's been walking basically around the world over a 10-year period. A real inspiration for all the young travelers out there. And we have some questions for you, rapid fire, okay. to help inspire all the young travelistas and travelistos around the world, wherever they may be. So, of course, young kids like Zara love camping. And they want to know, and especially they love to sleep in gares and nicely decorated yurts in places like Mongolia. But you've been doing the real rugged camping. Uh, so they want to know, how many nights do you spend camping in a tent versus how much time do you get to spend in hotels? And, you know, where do you take a bath? How do you take a shower? Well, as, as all the young travelers will know, when they go on holiday, it depends on where you go. So yeah. the last year and a half through Central Asia has been a lot of camping because I've covered big deserts, big mountains. And until I came to here, to Pakistan, I was camping out every night for probably six weeks. Wow. Maybe even closer to maybe two months. And then once I come into an inhabited zone like here, I stay at Shaykhanaz, I stay at local uh, truckers' hotels, uh, stay with families. So it depends. It really varies from landscape to landscape. Kids love campfires and roasting marshmallows. Do you ever get to do that? Make a campfire, cook your own meal? I actually had roasted marshmallows last week, believe it or not, at a <laughs> wedding in Islamabad. The first roasted marshmallow of my life because I didn't grow up in America and that was a new food. Now, you've had some animal companions. Uh, kids love animals. Usually they get to ride on them. When you've been going up and down the mountains, you've actually had the animals carrying some stuff, like some donkeys. Is the donkey the best pack rat out there, the mule, the donkey, or have there been other kinds of animals that have been helping you? So I started uh, using camels in Africa and then used them again through Saudi Arabia. In Jordan, I used mules. In Turkey, I used a mule. Uh, in uh, Central Asia, I used horses and mules and donkeys. So I've used, I think, what's left? Llamas, maybe, when I get right. to South America. There you go. It's really fun to travel with big animals. They have personalities, and they change the nature of your walk. They, you know, they become a partner in work, and they look out for you because they're carrying some of your food and water, and you have to look out for them. And that means looking for grass to feed them at the end of the day, looking for water. And actually, in that way, animals become your teachers because they teach you to focus and look harder at the landscape. Zara's favorite donkey's name is Trekker. Uh, Trekker was in Bhutan. Okay. And her favorite camel's name is Sandy. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> from a uh, very appropriate name. Yes. That was from the Emirates. Now, we have a saying in our house, which is, the little kannas must always travel light. Take only what you can carry by yourself. Now, here's a man who is taking, traveling for 10 years, and all he has is, let's have a look, this backpack. That is it, everyone. Kids, travel light like Uncle Paul. That is really it, isn't it? It is it, yes, that's it. And that's uh, too heavy as it is. I wish it were smaller. <laughs> wow. So one thing that Zara wanted to know is, and she was quite fearful when, when thinking about this question, have you ever been robbed? No. Other than the water canisters. The water and, uh, canister, yeah. yeah. So but that's, that was, your stuff. That was off of me, no robbery yet. So for the kids out there who are studying human history, human geography, which I'm very pleased to say is now an advanced placement course uh, in the United States, it's an AP course, so human geography is becoming much more prominent. I certainly encourage kids out there to major in geography. Yeah. They would love to know, how did you choose this route? What's the grand inspiration? I'm following the campfires of the first people who spread out of Africa on foot. So um, let's just say that I'm following the first people who discovered the world. And they left very faint traces, stone tools. Sometimes they left their bones. But the coolest thing is that they left us this little map of the world of our first migration and all of ourselves. So each one of us carrying a small map of the first human migration around the world with DNA. That's right. That's exactly right. And um, so how long is it going to take? Originally seven years, but now if you had to put a date on it, yeah, when should they come meet you in Tierra del Fuego? Yes, well, you know, I'll have to give you like a year's advance warning because I'm walking really slowly, but probably 2023, 2024. And don't tell my editors, maybe they can meet me on that. 2024, 20, so let's see if the kids, 2017, they're eight years old now. So when you're 15 yes. and you're old enough to uh, yeah, hop on a plane by yourself, school, yeah, yeah. plan on a flight down to Tierra del Fuego, by then they could probably catch a cruise to Antarctica. Well, that's it. Uh, keep going. Maybe that's how you'll celebrate, you think? We've talked about that. Actually. Yeah? yeah oh, okay. That. So it's, uh, 
It's gonna be a great gathering of all the people walking, including the man who's holding the camera. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All my walking partners, I'm gonna fly them down and walk together to the, uh, the last tip of the world that our ancestors reached maybe 7,000 years ago. There'll be hundreds of people. Wow, uh, count me in. Yes, I'm inviting course. myself. Yes, that's right, you're walking with me. So and uh, there'll be a lot of penguins, without a doubt, that's uh, right. down that's there. True, yeah. Well, Zara has a little gift for you. She couldn't bring to deliver to you herself, but uh, this is her sketch of Paul's footprints and the stone tools left behind by those wandering. It's about, what, 15,000 kilometers or more total, and some nice snowy mountains in the background. Yeah, so, thank you, Zara. Very beautiful. For you. Very light. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Travel smart, travel far.